In order to apply zoom to videos, you're going to want the footage that you are zooming into to be completely stationary. So if you are recording the footage yourself, be sure to use a tripod. If you've used a screen capture device like the one that comes with Corel Video Studio, the video is automatically stationary. The first step will be selecting what section of the video that you want to zoom into. You then need to apply cuts to the video to create in and out points. Expanding the timeline and enabling audio scrubbing can help streamline the process. As far as the timeline goes, I recommend the maximum setting minus one or two. To enable audio scrubbing, come up to your settings, preferences, edit tab, enable audio scrubbing. Click on that, select OK. Timing the zoom to coincide with what you are saying makes for a smooth effect. I'm using this footage as an example. I plan on zooming into the motor on this piece of equipment at the correct time. What you want to do is preview your video and try to determine where it is that you want to zoom in and zoom out. Then pinpointing the exact area will be a matter of coordinating it with your voice. So that being said, I'm going to play it now to the point that I know that I want to be. How's it to dig is this small motor over here. Okay, the place that I wanted to stop it was at the word here. Bring this over a little bit. So now, rather than coming here and backing up the clip and restarting it and trying to stop it at the end of here, I'm going to use audio scrubbing to, to look for the word here. Here, 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 over here. Okay, so that's basically the end right there of the word here. It doesn't have to be super perfect, just close. I'm going to come up here and look at the clip counter. It's at, at 19 seconds and 18 frames. A good general rule for the length of a zoom in or a zoom out on video is one second. So in order to have a complete zoom, where I said here, I'm now going to back this up by one second. So I want to go to 18 seconds, 18 frames. Back it up. Here, here, over here, over, motor, motor, all motor, all motor, all motor, all motor, all motor. Okay, I am then going to cut the video. And I want to stop it near where I say good job. motor over here. It's a Subaru motor that does quite a good job. Okay. Do our little timeline gig. Okay. Cut the video. Now I'm ready to apply a zoom in effect. I gotta open up the paths library to access them. The concept behind the five second folder is that if you were to apply an effect from that folder to a clip that is exactly five seconds long, the zoom in effect would take one second and the zoom out effect would take one second, making it a smooth effect. Except for the length of the time of the video clip, the story is the same for the 10 second and 20 second folders as well. What occurs with these preset effects is you can apply them to any length clip whatsoever, but the keyframes that regulate the time of the zoom in and zoom out are free floating. So in order to maintain a level of one second, there are three folders to allow you to apply a preset effect that doesn't need the timing of the zoom adjusted. So before you can apply the effect, you're going to have to know how long your clip is. There's a simple way to do it. Come to the clip, select it, right click, collect speed or select speed and time lapse. Come up here, you can see it's five seconds long and five frames. Click OK to close it. You now know that you want to apply a five second effect. 
I'm going to come up here and drag one in. And I am going to now open Customize Motion. There's two ways to select keyframes inside of Customize Motion. One is come directly to the keyframe and click on it when it turns orange. The other is come up here and you can select go to the next keyframe. And just like cropping a photo, we have to go to the next keyframe to come to the zoomed in effect. We're going to adjust our image the way we want it. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And you have to come up to this keyframe, right click, copy, come to the next keyframe, right click and paste, and that's it. The zoom in and zoom out effect is complete. All that's left is select OK. And then check your work to make sure it came out well. This is going to be pretty jumpy because I'm running a screen recording. Motor over here. The Subaru motor that does quite a good job. I have just a couple more things to cover. I'm going to come to a longer clip. Okay, this particular clip is 21 seconds, 20 frames. But I'm not going to apply an effect from the 20 second folder. I'm going to go with 10 because it's wrong. So I can show you the difference. Open up Customize Motion. Okay, now when I play the video, the zoom in effect is very slow. Now if the duration of this clip was actually 13 seconds, the zoom would be fairly close to a one second zoom, probably close enough you wouldn't have to do anything else. But if when you play back your video, you decide that you need to change that time period, you'll want to know how to go about it. Okay, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to select the previous keyframe, or the beginning keyframe is where I actually want to get to. I just want to point out the fact that this is set to zero as a result, of course come up to your next keyframe, it took two seconds and five frames to zoom in. So to set that to one second, simply grab your keyframe, slide it kind of casually. You have to let it go sometimes for it to read. Okay, I'm at one second and one frame. I mean, that's close enough. But it's quite difficult to move it one keyframe if you wanted to. There is an option up here to move one keyframe to the left or right, so I'm going to click it to the left, and that puts me at exactly one second. For the other end of the spectrum, you have to do the math. Click on the end keyframe, 21 and 19 frames. Obviously, you want to be at 20 and 19 frames. Grab your slider. Now see how it moves sometimes? That was one of the big reasons I wanted to point these buttons out to you for the final precision setting. And that's the same reason it isn't a bad idea to get used to using the previous keyframe buttons. Because it is very easy to have your mouse move, mouse move just a little bit and upset the position of the keyframe. Okay, I mean, you do have to right click on these things, but you can right click on them all day and you're not going to move the keyframe. So, like I said, select your keyframes up here, get used to that, and it can save you a little bit of headache also. Just an option. And that should pretty much cover everything that you really need to know about applying these zooms to a video.